Hello everyone, let me know if you guys can hear me on the chat real quick. Um, by the way, what's on your screen is actually in real time, so it's going to be updated as results come in. Um, it's updated by itself every few seconds, so um, it will show you exactly what's going on right now. The polls are closed in Georgia. There is some areas where the polls closed until right now, which is around 5.30ish Pacific time. Um, the polls were set to close at 5, which is 8 p.m. in Georgia, but some went a half an hour over. But these are the live results coming in right now. So um, stay here with us. We're going to be reading some uh, some posts on Twitter of some people that have been uh, talking about this. As you guys know, the liberal liberal Hollywood had been coming out and uh, in support for Ozef. I think that's, that's what his name is. And uh, I hope I said that right. Um, and also, feminists had been coming out in support of John Ozef instead of, you know, of Karen in the that, that may that, that goes to show if they're real feminist or not which they're not so as of right now john ozhoff is leading 50.4 to uh karen handles 49.6 but as i said this is in real time and we hope that it's going to go the other way okay it's very very close as of right now but i'm pretty sure that karen is going to take this that's what a lot of people have been speculating and the odds are for Ozoff to win, but as you guys know, all of those polls are a bunch of garbage. Press 1 if you guys can hear me. We are going to also when the when everything comes in, uh, we're going to go straight to um, the speech given by Karen in Georgia. So we're going to do that too once uh, the results actually come in. All right. So we are right now focusing on trying to get all the information for you guys and make sure that you guys are up to date on everything that is going on. Um, as you guys know, this is one of the most expensive campaigns for a state in a very long time. I'm pretty sure, you know, according to some people, they're saying <laughs> in history. So um, this is going to be very, very contentious. And, you know, it's going to be um, it's going to show the Democrats are really in decline because as of right now, they keep on pushing the narrative that the Democrats are going to come back in 2018, that they're going to come back and, and take over and, and, you know, take control and all that stuff. But it's it, in reality, it's not going to happen, folks. Hold on. Give me one second here. It says, why would people even vote for this punk ass kid? Not only that, like, why, w why would people vote for someone that doesn't even live in their district? Th that is one of the things that. Uh, a lot of people have been coming up with this and he says that he that people don't care if he lives in the district or not that that's that's his um that's his uh, his excuse saying the voters don't care where i live as long as i represent them which makes no sense whatsoever all right let me see if i can get some uh let me see if i can get some some stuff that's going on let's see here uh, live results, live results. Uh, we sat down with Jan Alsop in the final countdown of Georgia. So, th you know, like I said, they, they've been trying to push this very hard along with, you know, the, the mainstream media and also liberal Hollywood has been pushing for them to, um, to win. And that is just going to ca cause people to go to the other side. It's basically, that's all it's going to do. Hold on, let's see here real quick. If you guys have any questions or if you guys know anything that is going on, uh, let us know in the in the comments. That would be pretty awesome. I'm just trying to see if I can find any more information 
on both of them because I know that there's a lot of controversy coming from uh, Ozov himself, you know, being corrupt and all that stuff. Live election, let's see. I knew that there was some stuff that people were talking about about this guy. Georgia election, the most expensive congressional race in history. It says, don't let an outsider Democrats buy the election. So, you know, th that's what they've been saying for a long time. Tucker Carlson said the consequences of Georgia election have been exaggerated. The results won't be an omen uh, for what it is to come. So, and, th and that, you know, that's the thing about this is that the Democrats are going to try to continue to push and say, hey, you know what? We're taking the, the House back. We're taking, you know, the, ho the White House back in 2020 and all this stuff. But in reality, they're not going to take back anything. And this is just going to show how much of a decline the Democrats have. OK, because Karen is set to win and a lot of people are, you know, a lot of people believe it. Oh, no, let's see. It says Democrats fear bitterly disappointing loss in Georgia special election. So let's this comes from the Daily Caller and it says, hold on, give me one second here. All right. So it says Dems fear bitterly disappointing loss in Georgia special election. Democrats are worried that they could lose an extremely close Georgia special election runoff to replace former representative Tom Price. All right, it says party leaders like House Majority Leader Nancy Pelosi invested time hosting fundraisers and urging others to campaign on behalf of Democratic contender John Ossoff. But as Republican contender Karen Handel uh, narrows the gap between the two candidates, party strategists worry that they will lose the Tuesday runoff election. And they said, quote, just like any other sporting event, however unlikely it is that you're close heading uh, into the fourth quarter, a a loose, say a loss of bitterly disappointing. A, a lot. W I'm sorry. A loss will be bitterly disappointing, and there will be some feeling of uh, when you get it done, and it's not this race. Democratic strategist Dan Karen told Politico, "Quote: You'll definitely see some hand wringing from Democrats wondering where they're going to get over the hump." So. Again, they, they're pushing very hard to try to say that he's going to win. But a lot of people already know there is no path for him to win. And as if you guys can see right now, we're at 49.5 for Karen and 50.5 for John Ossoff. And um, here, let me, I got some more information here about Ossoff. Just give me one second. Um, there was a lot of people saying that this was Nancy Pelosi's boy. Right, John, o John Ossoff. The you know, there's some relationship going on between them two uh, when it comes to uh, this election. Why is she pushing so hard for him if they're in different states? Makes no sense. But let's continue. Uh, let's see here. Politico's chart compares fully reported districts now versus the primary uh, via Politico, and it says it, uh, G Georgia election might not end up being the biggest news tonight so president donald trump had come out during the last day or so um trying to push his support for karen and um, and he tweeted a few times before so let's see what president trump has said uh, starting off 24 hours ago, it says big day tomorrow in Georgia and South Carolina. Obamacare is dead. Dems want to raise tax big league. They uh, can only obstruct. No ideas. Vote Republican. Then President Trump said Democrat Democrat Jan Ossoff, John Ossoff wants to raise their taxes to the highest level and is weak on crime and security. Doesn't even live in district. So that's, you know, th that's what they were saying. That's what they were saying is that he doesn't even live where he's registered to vote in the district. But he is saying himself that the voters don't care if he lives in that district or not. All right. So it says, Karen Handel for Congress. She will fight for lower taxes, great health care, strong security, 
um, security at work, and it says, we will never give up. Vote today. Vote Karen Handel. That's from President Donald Trump. He tweeted that 15 hours ago. And then uh, eight hours ago, he tweeted, the U.S. once again condemns the brutality of North Korean regime as we mourn its latest victim. And he's talking about Otto. So just six hours ago, President Donald Trump, he spoke and he said, I'm sorry, he tweeted and he said, while I greatly appreciate the efforts of President Xi in China to help with North Korea, it has not worked out. At least I know China tried. So he was talking just about China. All right, let's go back to see what else they have. Someone said, pool boy, pool boy Osof. And it says, uh, President Trump is putting more political capital online with tweets supporting Georgia Republican candidate Karen Handel. So th they're basing themselves off the tweets. And uh, it says, polls Handel with late momentum inches slightly ahead of Osof. Uh, that was on the polls of earlier today. Again, what you guys see on your screen is live and it's being updated every 15 to 20 seconds. So, you know, the results are coming in. Most of these results as of right now are from early voting. The ones that are going to be of actual voting of today is going to come around 6 p.m. Pacific. So that's in uh, around 15 minutes from now. So you guys are going to be able to see the actual results of the the people that actually voted today again what you guys see on the screen is in real time all right so let's say it says um polls close in georgia closely watched expensive special election and that's what they're saying expensive special election it says in this uh is this georgia election one of those where you don't need to win the most number of votes to win i i Answer me that question in the in the comment section below in, in the chat. The person said someone by the name of Andrew bears a hat said, is this Georgia election one of those ones where you don't need to win the most numbers of votes to win? If anybody knows the answer to that, let me know in the in the chat. So it says, uh, let's see. Pulling my hair out. Damn election is close. In, is that the 6th district of Georgia? That's good news, I guess. So that was by Darnell Branch. I really don't know who Darnell is going for, but he says that he's basically pulling out his hairs right now. Uh, Georgia Special Election, District 6, Democrat Ossoff 50.5, Republican Handle 49.5. And it says, uh, let's see... Oh, someone by the name of Dave Francis 8 on Twitter said, How many non-citizens slash aliens are voting in Georgia election? Need to check every precinct? Recall foreigners are collecting welfare, not theirs. So, yes, most likely the Democrats are definitely having uh, illegal aliens vote. That is, that is a given because that's what they do. Okay, they're bringing people from other places to vote in this election they're also bringing people from other uh states and you know illegal aliens they're they're forcing them to vote all right remember when obama in an interview said you will not get uh you will not get deported if you vote because voting is a human right <laughs> that's what he said so he's basically gave the green light to all illegal aliens at the time to vote and that narrative is still being pushed to this day uh let's see here it says a lot of people are giving uh giving love live updates of what's going on um as of right now according to warren dix3 it says only 15 percent of precincts in but republican karen handel has expanded her small lead over john ossoff all right so as you guys can see, it's still stuck at uh, 49.5 and it, it keeps on updating in real time. So let's see, is this get your, it says, Baja, uh, get your tin hats on. Here comes some more conspiracy theories. I don't know about conspiracy theories. Um, illegal aliens are voting, okay? They most definitely vote, especially here in California. 
you will bet your ass that illegal aliens are voting in really, really high numbers. Okay, like really high. All right, same thing with dead people still being on the rolls and, um, you know, people bring, coming in from other states to vote, especially here in California. Okay, so it's extremely corrupt. I do not know what conspiracy theories you're talking about when it comes to that. Um, and it says he'll probably win the popular vote. <laughs> That's funny. Democrats vote for criminals all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, they, they vote for criminals. All right, so I'm going to be giving you more updates of what people are saying on, um, on Twitter. If you want to say anything and you want me to read it, go on Twitter, hashtag Georgia election, put your questions, and tag us so that we can um, answer your questions because... The ch I'm trying to read, you know, Twitter on one side and the chat on the other, and it's going back and forth. So, if you guys actually want to want me to answer any questions or or read off whatever you need to say, go on Twitter and uh, hashtag Georgia Election, and also tag us at GST under dash or underscore politics. All right. So let's see what else people are saying. Uh, let's see live election results. Live election results. Uh, handle surging in printing markets right now. Oh, there's another one that I have. Let's see if I can put it up on the screen. All right. So here is another um, another map, and it's going by precinct. And let's see if I can put it on the screen a little bit better so you guys can see that real quick. As you guys can see, there's you know there's some um, a little bit more information for you guys. So as of right now, as you guys can see, the, re the really dark red ones are going for Karen and the blue ones are going for John Ozoff. And as you guys can see, mostly is the southern side of the state that is uh, pretty blue and the northern side of the state is pretty red. But I, I don't know, by looking at this, you can totally see kind of like what happened with President Trump. Remember that? How the, how the map looked, the United States map? Well, the same thing is going for this. And as you guys can see, she has taken off, uh, taken over pretty much the whole north, northwestern area, except some areas on the, on this side. Here, let me show you some areas on this side where O's office is, it, you know, it's, it's kind of going his way, but it might turn, uh, you know, like a pinkish reddish color. And, um, but most of the south of the state is definitely blue, as you guys can see. Right here is really dark blue. All right, let's go to um, the other one that updates ever so often, and we'll see what's what's going on with it. But yeah, so that's how the state is looking as of right now. All right, so here we go. So we're at uh, 49.5, 50.5. Someone on the chat said that uh, Breibart has them at what? Let's see. Someone said Breibart has it at 50. I, oh, okay, here we go. So it says, let us know, says Breibart has it at Ozoff 49.2 and Handle 58.8. I mean, 50.8, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, you know, everybody's going to have it differently. Um, obviously, let me let me see what anybody else has on their thing. GST politics, are Democrats communists? Um, now they are. I used to know, like, old school Democrats. Um, you know, and I, I have to say that the old school Democrats at least had a brain. Today's Democrats have no brain. They have no common sense, no nothing. Democrats back in the day, they, they knew what they wanted. Okay. They, they, they understood and they understood that we needed to work together in order to make the country, uh, continue. But today's Democrats, all they want to do is obstruct. It's either them or nothing. And that's not the way that this, this country should work. Or that's not the way anything should work. Everything should work connected. All right. Whether you agree with the other person or not, it's for the greater good of the country for you two to come together and and come with a solution. Come up with a solution. You know, I forgot who was the one that said that, you know, back in the day, what they would do is either they would duke it out and then work together or go to a bar have a drink and make sure to come up with a solution there you know whichever way whichever way they want to do it 
whichever way they want to do it, but they need to come together because if they don't come together, this house will not stand. Okay. Whether whoever is in control, whether the Democrats in control, whether the Republicans are in control, they need to come together because it's for the greater good. Whatever they do, whatever problems they solve is going to affect every single one of us, especially at the level of the White House. The White House, anything that happens in the White House is going to affect every single one of us. So they need to get their stuff together. And yes, <laughs> what I would say is today's, uh, today's Democrats are communists okay so um thank you very much for your question that is at intel gator on on twitter all right so let's continue uh, a lot of people have different numbers you know like the one that we're watching here has it at 49.8 and 50.2 and others have it um at another lead so you know we're going to be finding different things. So we're going to be updating you to see what everybody else is saying. And uh, Italians for Trump on Twitter says that Georgia 6th District election results are handled at above 0.4. Uh, at GOP, Karen Handel is 50.2. The Democrats, Ossoff is 49.8. So that's basically what he's, what he's saying on Twitter. And again, people have it at different and here we go here we go we just updated 49.8 percent and karen handle at 50.2 all right so just give me one second here real quick and let's check let's check breibart.com and see what they're saying right now all right so it says georgia special election live wire democrat osa versus republican handle the polls have closed in georgia's sixth congressional district for the special election between Democrat J John Ossoff and Republican Karen Handel. The special election has turned out to be the most expensive in U.S. history, with each side pouring tens of millions of dollars to back their particular candidate, candidate as Democrats see a potential momentum shifter and Republicans see an opportunity to hold off the left once and for all in the era of President Donald Trump. President Donald Trump urges supporters in Georgia to turn out in a series of tweets, including one on Tuesday morning. And that's the one that I read to you guys earlier that says Karen Handel for Congress. She will fight for lower taxes, greater health care, strong security, uh, hard work. And it says who will ever who will never give up. Vote today for Karen Handel. And it says the, the race comes as a. Uh, in a district left open by former Representative Tom Price, Republican of Georgia, who vacated the seat when he became President Donald Trump's Health and Human Services Secretary. President Donald Trump won a traditional Republican uh, district nearly, nearly in November against Democratic Hillary, Hillary Clinton. So, a lot of people have it. A lot of people have it in different numbers, but as of right now, we're at 49.8, 50.2. So as of right now, Karen Handel is winning, and that's a very good thing, right? Don't you guys think it's a good thing? Let Press 1 if you guys think that Karen is definitely going to win this because um, it needs to change, folks. It needs to stay the way it was in Georgia so we can continue making America great again. That's... That's basically what President Trump is saying. Um, it says, while we're waiting for the next data dump, uh, here are the national D. What is, what is this guy talking about? Uh, no, 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 no. It says, GOP sirens blare over... GOP sirens blare over Georgia special election. This is coming from Leftist Politico. And it says, the GOP is bracing for the prospect of a loss in Tuesday Georgia special election. Go figure that this is from Politico. But let's see why they're saying that, you know, that she's going to lose. Let's just, let's, just, let's just see their, their leftist narrative. And it says, a grim confidential polling data, polling data circulates among GOP strategists, interviews with nearly two dozen Republican operatives and, specials and, sp and special officials reveal that they are preparing for the possibility of an unraveling defeat that would spur lawmakers to distance themselves from Trump 
and his already troubled legislative agenda and potentially encourage a wave of retirements. That is hilarious. That is hilarious. They're saying that she is going to lose and that every single thing that comes with the uh, with the uh, legislation from president trump is going to fail and um there's going to be a bunch of retirements because of it but go figure is leftist politico spewing the rhetoric like always all right so let's uh let's see what else it says on i'm looking over right now at breibart and uh, let's give this a quick refresh just to make sure that everything is up in the up and up yeah 49.8% for John Ossoff, 50.2% for Karen. And as you guys can see, here is the um, here is the map again. And remember what I told you guys on this, you know, I think it's like the northwestern area of the of the state. Remember how it used to be more blue? Now it's starting to turn. Alright? It you know, it, it's turning, folks, and it's turning. And as you guys can see, she has completely taken over the north, and now she's working her way to the west. All right, the south is still extremely blue, and I don't think it's going to change. All right, this area is going to stay the same, but as you guys can see, she's going to take over this whole area. Let me just show you with the cruiser here. And so, so she's going to take over this whole area, and let's see right here. So we got this area. And we got 49.35, oh, no, 47.2, it's really far away. All right, so it's 47.2 and 52.8 for Osof. So it's not like it's that big of a difference. It still could change. All right, let's see this area. And this is, let's see, for handle is 68.2 and 31.8. There's no way that he's going to take that back. I wish it actually told me what what this was, like what area this is. All right, so um, this is uh, early vote only. Again, remember I, I told you guys that for the first hour or so, or half an hour, it's going to be early voting. Once the results come in around after 6 p.m., which is actually right now, um, we're going to start to see the actual voting from today. All right, so this th this is coming in. And this is going to be updating in real time. So as you guys can see up in the north here, she has a substantial lead. And down in the south, he has a substantial lead. You see that? So the south is going for Democrat. Mo most of the north is going for Republican. And as you guys can see, she's taking over this whole area. And she's taking it over by a, by a very hefty amount. Okay, so she's not taken over just by a little bit. She's taken over by a big, big margin, which is a very good thing for her. All right, so let's continue and uh, let's see what they're saying on Twitter. Here is the thing. Let's give it a good, a little refresh real quick just to make sure that everything is good. And boom. Yeah, still the same. All right, so let's continue and see what's going on. And, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so we're going to refresh on uh, Breibart and see if there's any uh, other updates from those guys and see what's going on. All right, so I got three notifications. What are we saying? What are we saying? Oh, okay. All right, no problem. So we'll go back to getting more updates on, on the latest Georgia election thing on Twitter and seeing what people are saying. It says the winner of tonight's election will be John Mayer when at least 49 percent of the country will be singing why georgia so you know a lot of people are going to uh talk crap obviously a bunch of leftists are going to be talking crap about karen winning but that's okay we always like their liberal tears right it, it lubes up the gears of the of the trump train right we use liberal tears to lube up the the gears of the trump train and make it go faster and faster so more just more, more, more liberal tears always helps out. All right, it says the Democrat Party continues to fail. The Democratic Party continues to fail to use its vast financial resources in an intelligent way. So that's what someone said on Twitter. 
because John Ossoff used up $23.6 million, folks. 20, $23.6 million, while Karen Handel used $4.5 million. And what has President Trump always said? On time, under budget, gives off better results, folks. That's how it works out with this. Under budget, ahead of time, gives better results. And that's exactly what's happening right now. You see, he used 23.6 million. She used 4.5. And guess what? He's still getting his ass whooped. <laughs> that's, a, that's, how, that, that's how it works with this. It's crazy. It says, BBC News, Georgia election, Trump faces knife-edge congressional vote. As of right now, it's still going on the way of Karen uh, Handel. So let's give it a quick refresh and still still a little bit of a lead. So we're doing good. All right. So let's see what goes on. And it says, this is great news. Handle up 4,000 votes and pulling away now. Um, this was uh, by Proud of 45 POTUS, Fit Conservative on Twitter. All right. So... Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get more information on this, but most of it is just a bunch of updates. So uh, Kimberly from Fox News Channel said updates on Georgia special election as results are coming in. So I guess um, a lot of people are covering this. So let's see what's going on here with... It says in Georgia... Costliest U.S. House race hits ugly note as election looms. In Georgia, costliest U.S. Uh, race hits as election looms. Total spending in Georgia race of all candidates has topped $56 million. $56 million, folks. And that's most of it used, like I said, from Ozov, from the Democrats. The Democrats are trying to throw money at it, money at it, money at it. But just like every single one of their policies, just like every single thing that they have actually tried to do, it's failing. Because when you throw money at something, when it's not good, it's not going to give you good results. All right. So no matter how much money they're going to throw at this guy, they, he, he's just not going to give any results. They think that just by them throwing millions and millions at this, trying to put out, you know, hit pieces and, and uh, you know, a bunch of, you know, political videos out there trying to make uh, Karen Handel look bad is going to change anything. It's not. It's just not. It's not going to do absolutely nothing. So something called the resistance report. Yeah, the resistance report said something is going seriously wrong in Georgia's special election. It says the special congressional election in Georgia is a dead heat and several thousand residents of one county have already been preventing or have already been prevented from voting. Voter, voters from Cobb, DeKalb, and Fulton counties are all part of Georgia's 6th congressional district though the southern part of DeKalb County is not in the district, according to local media. Several thousand DeKalb County residents were prevented from casting ballots in tonight's election due to their addresses being just slightly outside of the district's confusing borders. It says that the issue reportedly happened during the primary election as well, in which Ozoff came, uh, came away as the top vote-getter but came in just shy of breaking the barrier needed to avoid tonight's runoff election. So they're saying that a lot of those people are not, uh, they're not allowed to vote because they are just shy of, of the, uh, I guess, of the cutoff for that district. And uh, that tends to help, you know, to happen a lot in, in a lot of places where, you know, you can't vote because you're not in that district, even though you thought you were and Maybe you were at one point, but then they changed the, the thing. So um, a lot of people have been, um, you know, have not been allowed to vote. And it says, it says that uh, it says that the 30 year old John Ossoff is a Democrat aiming to take over Georgia's sixth congressional district, which has been uh, solidly Republican since 1979, when former House Speaker Newt Gingrich held the seat until 1999. 
The seat was recently left empty by Republican Tom Price as he vacated it to become President Donald Trump's Secretary of Health and Human Services. Ossoff is running against Republican Karen Handel, who nearly lost the 2014 Republican primary election for U.S. Senate seat. Handel is currently Georgia's Secretary of State and oversees all elections in the state. Ossoff himself doesn't live in the 6th Congressional District, but rather just outside its borders. It says, with his girlfriend who is currently taking med school classes, Ossoff maintains his spent... Uh, it says Osaf maintains he spent most of his life in the 6th Congressional District and knows the community well. So he is saying that the reason why he doesn't live in that district is because his wife or his girlfriend or whatever she is uh, is going to med school and he's living with her. But he has always lived in the 6th Congressional District according to him. So he knows the community well, he knows the people well, and that's why he wants to represent them even though he doesn't live there. As you guys can see, Karen just went up just a little bit more, 50.9% to John Ossoff's 49.1%. All right, let me read some of the chat real quick just to make sure. <clears throat> All right, so it says, no way Ossoff has a girlfriend. <laughs> I always, you know, that's what I thought too. I know, like who the hell would want to go with that guy? He looks like a beta male, but anyway, so let's say, let's say, let's say, Handel's now up over 5,000 votes, that's correct. Sewer flakes, most dedicated or brainwashed. Jack goes off. Handel is kicking his ass. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And he spent like a million tons more than she did too, which is kind of sad. NBC is trying to get rid of $17 million flop Megyn Kelly. Yep, we reported on this earlier today. If you guys haven't seen it yet, NBC is trying to have Fox News buy her contract. And Fox News Channel is saying, nope, no way. She left us, she jumped ship, she betrayed everyone. You guys can keep her. So what's happening now is that what they're thinking is that they're going to basically give her a show on MSNBC instead of NBC. On her first interview with Putin, she screwed up. Okay? She got criticism from both sides. She got beat by a rerun of 60 minutes, not an even a new a new um, a new episode, a rerun of an old 60 minutes uh, segment. And then she had an interview with whoever it was. And then she had an interview with um, with Alex Jones from Infowars. Right? Super hyped up. They thought it was going to be like this bombshell kind of thing. And um, it turned out to be a flop. An even bigger flop than when she interviewed Putin. All right? So now she got criticism right before even, you know, that episode aired. And now she has even more criticism today, and NBC wants to unload. They said, you know what? We screwed up. We got, you know, it was a toxic investment, and now we want to get rid of her, but now we can't. So, you know, we, they don't even know what the hell to do with her. And um, I said this before, you know, like she was done. As soon as she left Fox News Channel, she was done. All right. There's no way that anybody was going to go to another, especially a leftist, uh, leftist network like, M uh, like NBC to go and watch Megyn Kelly, who has been a never Trumper. She hates Trump and she has been very left leaning and um, she wasn't doing, a f doing good at Fox News Channel and now she's do doing even worse at NBC. Hold on, the music went really loud. All right, sorry about that. The music went off really loud. I don't know why. Should I just turn off the music altogether? I don't know. L let me know in the con in the chat. D should I turn off the music? Press one if you want me to turn it off. Uh, let's see. Let's give it a refresh. Oh, here we go. Fifty-one point six. Fifty-one point six for Karen. Forty-eight point four for Ozoff. I hope I'm saying his name right. <laughs> I really hope that I am saying his name right. Texas is in play. That's funny. Uh, Megan Kelly will be in Al Jazeera soon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she would. It's either that or or Russia Today, RT. 
one of those two they're gonna go that's where all of the the excess you know the ones that used to be something and then all of a sudden they betray everyone and then they up somewhere else that's that's where they end up they either end up in Al Jazeera or they end up in Russia today either or All right, so yeah, so there was more twos than ones, so I'm just going to turn off the music real quick. I'll put it back on in case there, we have like a like a time where I'm just trying to find more news about this. But it looks like it's updating like crazy. We had 246 new results. All right, let's see what people are saying. And people are saying, it says, here's the latest look to the runoff. And as you guys can see on your screen, 51.6 for Karen, 48.8 for John. All right, says, did anyone know that there is a special election in South Carolina today? Seems like the focus has been on Georgia and South Carolina was ignored. Well, the thing about South Carolina, here, let's see. That, that, that is actually true. Let's see. What's going on in South Carolina? South Carolina. Let's see here. What's going on in South Carolina? All right. Well, in South Carolina, Ralph Norman is definitely kicking ass against Archie Parnell. I hope I, I screw up last names, folks. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, so the Republicans are definitely winning in South Carolina. And that's a given. So, you know, there was really no, no big shocker there. But the good thing is that Ralph Norman is definitely beating Archie Parnell. So that's what's basically going on. Uh, let's see if maybe I can put it up on the screen too, so we can have both of them going on at the same time. Let's see real quick. <clears throat> All right, hold on. Give me one second real quick. Let's see. All right, give me one second so I can get this up there. All right, so let's get it on the screen. All right, so there is South Carolina, and then we're also going to be keeping up with Georgia between Karen and John. So we will be covering both because, yeah, it's true. Like, why are we not covering South Carolina at the same time when we can? Because, you know, the results are going to be coming in, but at the same time, we want both Republicans to win. So... And the reason, in, in reality, the reason we want the Republicans to win is because today's Democrats are completely corrupt. Today's Democrats are more communist than anything else. And they really want to destroy the country more than fix it. Okay. If the Republicans, I mean, if the Democrats were doing good, if the, if the Democrats had a brain, then we'll be like, okay, you know what? Let the best man win. But guess what? The Democrats are nothing but anti-American scum. And they have been for the last 16 years or probably even more. But as I can remember, the last 16 years, they have been nothing but leftist and, uh, and communist scum. So guess what? The Republicans need to win. So it says that... Uh, is you just said it. Yes, California and New York is colluding to buy an election in Georgia. And the reason they're saying that is because Nancy Pelosi and also the, the representatives from New York have been pushing extremely hard to get John Ossoff into power. Okay, for him to get into that, that spot. Okay, that's the reason why they're saying that. All right. So it says, um, let's see what else. There's a lot of updates, but not enough people talking about it, which makes no sense. If you guys can hear a barking is because it's my dog. <laughs> he, you can hear his barking right through the walls. So if you guys hear a bark, that's our, our dog, our office dog. All right. So let's see here. Trump attacks John Ossoff on day of Georgia's special election. That's funny. This is coming from uh, from Yahoo. But as you guys know, Yahoo is extremely leftist. And they're saying they're attacking Ossoff even though he's a piece of garbage. All right. So let's see what's going on. 
a lot of people are, you know, there's a lot of people on, on Twitter that are posting more of the, you know, of the results than they are of actually talking about the situation. We should talk about the situation, folks. You know, the results is what is, is the end, you know, it, it's the, the end product, right? But we still need to talk about it. We need to talk about what's going on. We need to talk about the issues. We need to talk about what each person is bringing to the table and also what is what baggage are they coming with, right? Because both of them are coming with baggage and we need to know that baggage, right? So people need to talk more about this instead of just putting up, oh, here's the results. Here's the results. Come on now. <clears throat> All right. So let's see what's going on. Donations coming from wealthy left in California. That's true. That's true. They, they were using a lot of money that were coming. You know, they, the thing about Nancy Pelosi was doing a lot of campaigning. They were doing a lot of um, fundraisers here in California to give to John Ossoff. That, that's what, what was going on. All right. And that on itself is actually colluding because they're not in the state. Nancy Pelosi does not have any fight in this, okay? So she should just, you know, step away, keep her, you know, keep her face off of this and, uh, you know, and, and not have to worry, you know? Just give your support, but don't start campaigning for this person. That's why they're saying that California is colluding, but it's not California because Nancy Pelosi does not represent the state of California, <clears throat> All right, it says early returns point to close race in Georgia. We know that. Let's see what you guys are saying on money coming from San Francisco. Yeah, not only from Cam not only from San Francisco, folks. There it's coming from a lot of places. It's coming from LA. It's coming from um San Fran the San Francisco area, you know, and there's no reason why she's she's supposed to be doing this. Okay? There's no reason why. <clears throat> all right so let's see here i think we got the thing about it on especially on this is that it says karen is up by almost ten thousand votes reporting halfway what oh yeah we're updating we're up, we're updating in real time i don't know what the hell you're talking about Carrie is up almost 10,000 votes and the reporting is halfway done. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. She, she is in a high lead. Absolutely. She is in a high lead. And uh, we're going to go there live when she actually wins and she speaks. We're going to be there live. So don't even worry about it. We're going to see what she needs to say. And, uh, and then we're also going to be covering at the same time um, the run in North, uh, South Carolina. So, as you guys can see, and it's crazy because you know what, folks, right now, the leftist media is having watch parties for John Ossoff as polls close in Georgia. It's so crazy, extremely one sided. And then they they say, oh, yeah, we're not biased. Why do they not have a watch party for Karen for Karen Handel? They only have a watch party stream for uh, John Ossoff. That is why the mainstream media should definitely die. The mainstream media is extremely, it's just, it's just completely ridiculous. But don't worry, folks. As we grow, we're going to, you know, getting... We're going to get a crew and get some people out to places and, um, and you know, like for stuff like this, you know, we're trying to get press credentials so we can, you know, stream uh, stuff like this uh, live within the, the venue or where they're going to have their watch party and stuff like that. So it, it's all coming in the future, folks. Don't worry. It says Democrats have lost elections in Virginia, Minnesota, Iowa, Delaware and Connecticut lost every election tonight. Georgia will make six. 
a lot of people are forgetting about South Carolina, folks. <laughs> a lot of people are forgetting about South Carolina, damn it. Yes, Georgia is going to be six. South Carolina is going to be seven. All right, who, who, oh, Town Hall is doing this. Okay, so. Yep, so that's going to be six. South Carolina is going to be seven. And um, that's what's going to happen. So let's see here. All right, so give, give me one second. Let's give this a, a refresh, and then we'll go check out what's going on in South Carolina. Give that a quick refresh, too. All right, so as you guys can see, 51.6 for Karen and 48.8 for John Ossoff. We're going to see what's going on on the map. Here we go. As you guys can see, this whole area is still pretty blue. Um, this one is not as blue. Uh, let's see here. This area right here got mm, substantial lead. This one, not as much. Uh, that one has pretty good lead for Ozoff. And that one has eh, kind of lead for Ozoff. But as you guys can see, look at this. Look at this. All red. And substantial lead in red, too. Not just like some little margin. No, we're talking about substantial lead. And as you guys can see here, now it's going off into the, you know, the eastern part of the state. And it's all coming in. All right. Tide is changing and it's going to get good. So let's let's see what's going on as of right now, 51.6 to 48.4. And let's see what's going on in South Carolina because we also want to keep up on that. And uh, let's see here real quick. All right. So 51.2 for Ralph Norman, 47.9 for Archie Parnell. All right, so that is also the election that's going on in South Carolina for the U.S. House seat. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So it says election results, Republican wins U.S. House seat in South Carolina. Look at that. I'm like so focused on, on, on Georgia, just like everybody else. Poor South Carolina didn't get any love. But here we go. Let's see what it says. It says, uh, Ralph Norman, a Republican and former state representative, defeated Archie Parnell, a Democrat and a wealthy for uh, former banker in the South Carolina special election Tuesday for U.S. House seat vacated by Mick Mulvaney, now director of U.S. Uh, House of Management and Budget. So that's what happened, folks. Boom. Done. South Carolina, Republican. And uh, yeah, so that, that's awesome. That's awesome. So now we know that we got one and now we're going to Georgia. We're going to keep on, we're going to keep on, uh, on staying here with Georgia, giving Karen some, uh, some good vibes. Boom, boom, you know, giving her some good vibes so she can win. All right. So let's see what's going on. Let's give us a good refresh. 51.6. As you guys, uh, as you guys know, other places give d different numbers. Uh, let's see what's going on with Breitbart as of right now. Uh, people are saying. Oh, okay, so yeah, so it just came in that Republican Ralph Norman has won in South Carolina, just like we broke just right now. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, someone on the chat said that Breitbart keeps updating crazy. Okay, let us know. Says 52.6 to 47.4 now from Breitbart. Yep, that's that sounds about right. It's gonna it's gonna update in just a in just a second here. I'm I'm looking also at Breitbart real quick. Let's put it up on the screen so that way we have two different sides uh, seeing what's going on. <clears throat> here, let's see here. Oh no 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 no! I don't know where people are looking at Breitbart. Well, I'm looking at Breitbart right now, and Breitbart still has it exactly the same as we do. You know, is is exactly the same. So I don't know where Let Us Know is getting, <laughs> is getting its uh, its numbers. All right, so let's see here. It says Handle opens up nearly a six point lead now. As things looking bleaker in Georgia for the Democrats, her 52.6% uh, 
uh, with 96,130 uh, 96, vote lead on Osof 47.4, with 86,531 votes. It says per the decision, square, uh, decision desk headquarters. All right, let's let's look up decision desk headquarters because that's the one that they're using. So that's what um, that's the what Breibart is using. So let's see real quick. Um, where is Georgia? Where are you, Georgia? Where are you? All right, let's see here. Telling Norman. Maybe if I kick tracker, what's going on? All right, so um, I'm just going to keep up. With, I, I don't know. I, I can't find it from Decision Desk Headquarters. It says, not good for Democrats right now. Our Democrat friends at Osaf Headquarters tells us that I love the SOFA pundits on Twitter who are saying that the Democratic Party is done if we lose. The Democrats haven't even... the Oh, I'm sorry. The district wasn't even supposed to be in play. The fact that we are playing it close in deep and red district should make them worry heading into 2018. So again, they're just trying to, you know, to sh shift it and to lie and to make it seem like, oh no, don't worry. Not only did we lose this, 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 and this, and this, this is the seventh state that we're losing. It's all cool, guys. All right? Like, what fire? There's no fire. While the whole Democratic Party is like burning down behind them. There is no fire, folks. It's just smoke. That's it. It's ridiculous. You know? It's like, Jesus Christ, take a fucking loss, man. Right? Take your L. That's all, that's all I got to say is take your goddamn, L, your goddamn L, Democrats. Just say, yeah, you know, yeah, we lost already six, <laughs> six states. We lost six states. And then when, once, once it comes to 2018, we're going to lose absolutely everything. All right? Because the Democrats are set to lose even their underwear. All right? They're going to lose every single thing. All right, they're going to be completely evicted from from uh, from government when it comes to 2018. Just take your goddamn L. That's all I got to say. <clears throat> all right, let's see if we got some Alright, this <laughs> someone by the name of Firecrotch58 said, of course Russia is meddling in the Georgia election. It's just a given, right, Democrats? Tomorrow or later on they're gonna be like, Oh yeah, Putin Putin got in the way somehow, you know. The Russians came in, started changing votes from Repu from Democrat to Republican. It it's Putin. There's no other way, right? Olsoff is such a good guy. Right? Handel is such a, you know, fascist. There was no way that she could have won. It had to be, you know, Putin. Right? Putin brought in his hand and started moving things around. They started hacking everything. Come on now. Like I said, come on, Democrats. Take your goddamn mail. All right. So hold on. Let's see. Someone send me a, a tweet. Let's see if it's a question or a comment or what's going on. GSP Tyler, um, I am watching this live voter feed. I've been refreshing the page myself. Well, you don't have to refresh the page, brother. Yeah, I'll, I'll, re I'll refresh the page for you. There you go. Boom. Refresh. 52.6, 47.4. Sometimes the, the results come in faster in one place than another. But like I said, I'll keep this on the screen. And I will be updating you guys depending on what people are saying on Twitter also. Hoping that what, you know, what the reporters on Twitter are, uh, if, if what they're saying is correct. Which I'm hoping. But as of right now, yeah, they're pretty much correct. 52.6. Look at that. <laughs> Putin made me fat. <laughs> two scoops, two genders, two terms. Deal with it, snowflakes. Damn. That was well put. I like that. Boom. Two scoops. Everybody else gets one. <laughs> it 
It says, Georgia ain't pajama boy country. Dems spend piles of money, still can't win in election. Losers. Yeah, that's right. This is coming from Desert to the Sea on Twitter. And I got I, I to gotta retweet that. That's, that was good. Pajama boy. <laughs> All right. So let's see what else is going on here. Uh, pajama. <laughs> that's hilarious. Pajama boy. But yeah, folks, so 52.6 to 47.4. I got two more notifications on Twitter. It says, no, look at the link I posted. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. My bad. <laughs> See, sometimes I'm reading stuff a little bit too fast. You know, give me a break. Come on now. I'm trying to get so many things. Oh, okay. Here we go. All right. So this is um, what, what the person... Uh, who are you? Let's see. Let me, let me follow you real quick, OG. OG Wiz. All right, let me follow you real quick, brother. I'm sorry for not reading it correctly. But here we are. Oh, thank you very much for the 20 bucks. Who gave me the 20 bucks here? Uh, Greg Christensen. Thank you very much. It says, DeKalb County, heavily damn it. Only 15% vote in. Hold on, MAGA. Yeah, that's definitely right. All right, so we got another one from Decision Desk. This is where actually... Um, Breitbart was getting their numbers from so let's see what they have to say I'll put it up on the screen in just a second oh here we go okay so according to decision desk HQ all right so this is where uh, Breitbart's getting their numbers 53.2 for Karen 46.8 for John he's done he's definitely done there's no way he can come back from this. Again, thank you very much, OG Wiz. I'm sorry I read that wrong, but you just hooked it up, brother. Thank you. All right, so let's move on. Oh, I'm a chick. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just keep screwing up on this. I'm so sorry. Thank you, OG Wiz. How about that? I I, I didn't I didn't mean to uh, to be calling out genders here, right? Don't don't ex don't execute me. No, I'm just kidding. But thank you very much to Greg for those 20 bucks. Thank you very much. It helps out immensely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's see what else people are saying on, on the Twitters. Let's see what they're saying. It says, what are we learning from the Georgia election is that no matter how much money Dems throw at elections, their ideas just aren't working. The thing about it, uh, this is coming from T Money 509 on Twitter. The thing about it, bro, is that there is no ideas coming from the left. Okay? It's just a bunch of, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. Give me some money, give me some money, give me some money. Right? Don't assume my gender. Don't assume this, don't assume that. Right? He's a victim, he's a victim, they're a victim. That whole group is a victim. That's all they, that is all they say day in day out okay and then we got pajama boy james comey almost crying while he's testifying saying that trump uh i didn't want to be alone with trump okay he's a very intimidating man i didn't want to be alone there with him you know that's why i made memos and all this stuff like we have a bunch of beta male cucks running in the democratic side okay nobody wants a limp-wristed idiot in office again okay that's the you know that's what's going on with the democrats like i said the democrats today are not what the democrats were back in the day it's just not just just doesn't work that way All right, so <clears throat> let's see what's going on here. Let's see if the other one did any updates yet. 52.6. Yeah, so it's, it's, that one is still stuck at 52.6, but this one, as you guys can see, and I think it gives a little bit of a better detail on what's going on in different areas of the state. It says update at 6.20 and 9.13 p.m., which that is actually in their time uh, here, Pacific time is 636. And it says, um, Handel's lead is up by almost 10,000 votes. 
Yep, 10,000 votes, folks. That's what's going on. I'm going to continue reading some more of the, the stuff that's going on on Twitter to see what people are saying. And it says the handle all's off election is a test to see if the Bay Area can buy a Georgia election when they can't. Again, they can throw money at it. They can throw whatever the hell they want at it. They can throw their underwears at it. It will not change the outcome. Okay, because the left has no no path. They have no ideas. They have no agenda. They have no nothing. Well, they do have an agenda, but they don't have anything constructive uh, for the people. They only have things constructive for the type of people that they want to target, right? What That's what they're doing today. They're targeting different groups thinking that they can ride to victory off of the backs of a certain group, whether it be the disabled, whether it be the gays, whether it be the, you know, the Latinos or African-Americans or Native Americans or whatever, right? They go to a certain state and they say, okay, which is the biggest minority? And if they say, okay, you know what? Latinos. All right, fine. Boom. Let's ride, you know, let's ride to victory off the backs of the Latinos. What can we do? To ride the backs off the Latinos, right? So what do they do? They they start promising, uh, you know, reform, uh, immigration reform. They start saying, you know what? We're going to give you rights. We're going to give try to get your papers. We're going to try to do this. We're going to try to do that. And at the same time that they're doing that, they go around and start recruiting illegal aliens to have them vote. Okay, that is what the Democrats do, folks. That is what the Democrats try to do. But it, as of right now, is just not working. We're in a completely different ballgame when it comes to elections. Okay, we're in... We're, we're, they, they are not catching up. All right, they're stuck in their old ways and they haven't noticed that the climate has changed. All right, it's the different world out there and they're just not noticing it. <clears throat> and it's going to cost them. And it's going to cost them a lot in 2018. It says, All of the money donated to Georgia election for liberal candidate just shows California would do anything to buy and, and even win another state. So they're talking about, you know, Pelosi yet again when Pelosi doesn't represent California, but... First, we got to change the narrative that California's liberal state because it's not. Anyways, candidates in Georgia's special election have spent $150 to $250 per vote. Bloody hell. That's what someone wrote on Twitter. So it says, how do you dare conclude to, oh no, how do you dare collude to influence an election in Georgia? I'm telling Sessions. So that's what, that's what someone wrote to Chelsea Handler. Because Chelsea Handler and a bunch of other liberals were, um, they were trying to tell people to vote for Ossoff. And also the, the, the liberal uh, feminists were saying, you know what, don't vote for that woman. You're right. They're calling her a fascist and all of the other leftist narratives. Vote for Pajama Boy. Vote for Ossoff. <clears throat> it says Georgia election has me furiously on the edge right now. That's what someone wrote on Twitter. Georgia obviously needs to import more illegal aliens if they plan to win the seat in the next election. Everybody knows this, folks. Everybody knows that the left is trying to force or trying to push it. So, dem uh, you know, uh, convicted felons, people in jail and also illegal aliens can vote. And it's and it's disgusting. And it's completely fucking disgusting. Oh, I'm sorry. Freaking disgusting. I didn't mean to cuss. I'm sorry. But anyways, so let's go on and see what the heck is going on here. <laughs> Someone wrote, uh, I'm pretty sure this person is, is a Democrat. And it says, follows Georgia's election too closely and falls out of chair into hell. <laughs> mm. So it says, uh, someone else on, on Twitter says, so San Francisco... My former hometown is colluding with a special election in Georgia by pouring millions to help an anti-American lib. So I go, I was wrong. I judged the book by its cover and I was wrong. I am so sorry, liver lip Louie, you are not a lib. 
It says, uh, breaking, a judge just intervened in Georgia's special election. This is bad, folks. Shady business. Um, this is according to Red State Watcher. So let's say what the, you know, I, I really don't trust Red State Watcher because, you know, a lot of their stuff is really, really, you know, gray. Uh, you know, can you trust it? Can you not trust it? I don't know. But this is according to Red State Watcher, not us. All right. I just want to make that disclaimer. And it says, breaking, a judge just intervened in the Georgia special election. This is bad, folks. And it says, a judge has uh, reportedly intervened in the Georgia special election and has ordered the county that predominantly Democrat to keep its polls open in extra 30 minutes. Oh, this is old news. Jesus Christ. When we when we started this, um, when we started this, uh, this broadcast, I said, if you guys have just joined us right now, that you know uh, in some areas an extra 30 minutes were added after the polls closed okay the polls were set to close at 5 p.m pacific that's 8 p.m eastern and uh, in some areas like uh, DeKalb county they stayed open another 30 minutes okay now would that would that change anything when it comes to the outcome i doubt it but you know, that's that's basically what this article is talking about and clickbaity title and stuff. So, all right. So let's move on. Did Hillary, did Hillary Clinton prepare also? <laughs> maybe she maybe she gave her some she gave him some pointers. Give him some pointers on how to lose. I got one more notification. Give me one second. Oh, no. No, it was just someone following us. Uh, do, 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 do. If you have Twitter, follow us on Twitter at uh, GST underscore politics. If you do have Twitter, we post some stuff on there. Uh, we're trying to post a lot more stuff on there, but um, that's basically what's going on. As you guys can see, Georgia's uh, Congressional District Special on your screen here. Karen, a Republican, has 53.2. And uh, John Ossoff, the Democrat, has 46.8. And she has a substantial lead, man. Like, Jesus Christ. 104,223 to 91,657. As of right now, 195,880 total votes have been counted. And we need new numbers. That's funny. Um... This is definitely up, up, uh, updating in real time, so don't worry. It's not like it's not like uh, we're not updating it or anything, but it is updating. Okay, if you just joined us, if you didn't know, there was also another election going on in South Carolina where the Republican won. Okay, so this is going to be if um, when I'm sorry, not if when Karen Handel wins. She is going to be the seventh person to win or the seventh state to win in a row for Republicans. So that's basically what's going on. All right. So let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> All right. We're going to be reading some more stuff off of. Um, let's see if it ever updated on the other one. <laughs> Jesus. As you guys can see, it hasn't even updated on the other on the other one. You know, the one we we were doing earlier it hasn't even updated. It's still fifty two point six to forty seven point four. When uh, Decision Desk HQ is saying that it's fifty three point two to forty six point eight. That's what happens, folks. Sometimes you know some are going in others. Is this any streams of Osof fans crying? Oh well, well, let's see. Let's see what's going on. At the watch party of Osof. Maybe I can put it on the screen real quick. <clears throat> I'll put it on the screen real quick. Uh, maybe if. But there's like a. <laughs> like a big celebration thinking that he's gonna win. That's hilarious. And, you know, they, 
liberal media doesn't even have a watch party for for Karen. For Karen Handel. But let, let's let's find it. Let's find out what's going on. Let's see. Watch party. Let me see if uh, if we have it through the pool. Through a pool feed. Watch party Karen Handel. All right, so let's see if there is any. Uh, no, there's no. Um, there's no. There's no live streams of uh, of a watch party for Karen Handel. I don't know what's going on. I would think there would be. Oh, for the person that's asking, Nightbot is just like our mod. Um, if there's something that is either. You know, someone saying either fuck Trump or, or you know, uh, uh, impeach or anything like that or saying bad words, then, you know, Nightbot will basically, um, will just time him out for just a little while. But n not bad words. Uh, you, you can say bad words like uh, fuck and all that other stuff. But if they say fuck Trump or Trump is a bitch or whatever, then uh, Nightbot will definitely take it out. It says breaking severe flooding in Georgia. <laughs> Le Le oh, okay, I get it. So it says breaking severe flooding in Georgia from liberal tears. You're funny, truck. You're funny, funny guy. Jesus, who? Press one if you need some coffee, or is it just me? I think I need some coffee. Let me put on some music real quick. Let me get let me get some coffee, and I'll bring you guys some more updates in just a few seconds. But I think I need some coffee. Press one if you guys need some coffee. So much going on, folks. So much going on. <laughs> Megan Kelly, literally, Megan Kelly is a total, total disgrace, a flop, guys. It, it's just how crazy that um, that you know her ratings are just going on the floor, just completely destroyed. A lot of people just want to uh, get banned by. Uh... Hey, truck, is truck still on here? Here, l let me let me mod truck real quick. Truck has been watching us for such a long time, he, and he's fair. All right, truck. So press truck. Let me know if you want to get modded for this stream, just to ke try to keep everything good. I know that you're. I, I know that you're. Uh, I know that you're. You're fair. So. As you guys can see on the screen, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I was just joking. Someone's bringing me a coffee. All right. Someone's bringing me a coffee. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. But um, let, let's just see what's going on real quick. All right, truck. I know that you're fair. So the only thing that you have to do is if someone says, you know, like something like impeach or fuck Trump or whatever, just uh, just time them out. No, no banning today. Just time them out, and uh, if they keep on continuing, then we will deport them. But for right now, truck, if you can, please, if you're gonna stay for a little while, help us out by doing uh, by modding, and um, and like I said, don't don't ban anyone. Just time them out, and I'll take care of it. All right, so let's see what's going on with. Uh, oh, I got three notifications, huh? All right, give me one second. Let me see if there are questions or concerns on what's going on. <clears throat> All right, so it says that this is according to Decision Desk. Yeah, the South Carolina one. Yeah, um, who is this? Oh, OG Wiz. Yes, they did call South Carolina. Republican won. We were covering it earlier in case you just joined us. Uh, re the Republican in South Carolina won. So this is actually this in Georgia is actually going to be the seventh one that um, that the the Republicans won in a in a row. All right, the seventh win. We just can't stop winning, folks. <laughs> we just it says um, GST politics. This is coming from Ray Radbury. 
and it says, I'm a Democrat, but I like your YouTube election feed. Oh, thank you very much. You know, I, I try to be fair. Okay, I try to be fair. All right. I understand that everybody, even if you're on the right or the left, you have your pros and cons to certain scenarios. Okay. I know that there are some Democrats out there that do not want illegal aliens in this country. Right. But they can't be a Republican because they don't they, they really don't um, they don't really agree with everything that has to do with the Republican side. I understand that. Right. And I welcome Democrats. This should be a place where we can come together and talk about the issues. OK, not a lot of people are talking about the issues, folks. That is the only way that we are actually going to come together as humans and say, hey, you know what? Yeah, we do have difference of opinion, but at the same time, we should work together to fix it and to come to a, a um, come to a median point. Because politicians need to work together. That's the number one thing. They definitely need to work together. Okay. But we need to pressure them into working together. Because this isn't like a football game or a baseball game that whether who wins or loses, ah, okay, fine, let's just go home, you know, and it'll just be another day tomorrow. That's not how it works in politics, folks. Anything and everything that happens in politics is going to affect us. Whether it's going to affect us in politics, I mean, in, 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 uh, in our taxes, or it's going to affect us in our health care. Or is going to ha affect us in our education, in the education of our children, grandchildren, friends, family members. It's going to affect us. And if we don't work together, it's only going to get worse. All right. The Democrats right now are obstructing. And I understand that is not what the people, what the actual Democrat registered voters want. This is just a bunch of rogue Democrat uh Democrat uh, politicians going rogue. So it's up to you, Democrats. If you're in, if any Democrats are there again, uh, uh, on on the chat, it's up to you guys to put these Democrats that are going rogue on check. All right, we're counting on you guys to make sure that you guys tell your congressmen, your representatives, your your governors, your stuff to get get it together. All right. That's all I got to say. But anyways, let's keep going. All right. So let's give it a, a quick refresh and see where we're at. And uh, 52.5, 47.5. And uh, let's see what's the latest uh, people are saying. Georgia special election. Yep. 52.5. All right, so um, someone by the name of Matt Zoller said, it would be great if I could see a single tweet about Georgia election from anyone that wasn't basically, this proves I'm right. <laughs> oh, you know, like I said, you know, people are just not talking about the issues. We should be focused on the issues and focus less on, on who's winning what. But anyways... That's the way it is right now. Very competitive, and that's fine. And it says, don't believe me. Just check out the election going on in Georgia. I know people didn't vote for the duck. Uh, I guess they're talking about President Trump. Oh, well, whatever. Um, someone else by the name of Peter D. said, Democrats shalonged again. <laughs> Remember, folks, this is the seventh state in a row that the Democrats have lost. The seventh in a row. It says, uh, yo, Golden State Times, I tell my congressman, if you tell me those idiots were who are pro-Trump. I'll tell my congressman, if you tell those idiots who are pro-Trump. I'm, I'm talking about both sides. I'm talking about both sides, folks. Both sides. Come on now. We need to get together because, you know, a divided house can't stand. And we need to be divided. We seriously, this division needs to be closed. All right. This division needs to come together. All right, give me one second. I'll refresh, and someone's telling me to refresh, man. Come on, man. All right, 52.5 uh, against 47.5. 47 
It says, all stuff, devil went down to Georgia and lost. This is, oh yeah, just wait till 2018. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna say, it's going to get good in 2018. It's going to be an interesting year. All year 2018 is going to be very interesting. Let's see if the other, um, the other one ever updated anything. Let's see. Jesus Christ. All right, let's just take it away because they didn't even update anything. They don't care. <laughs> God. All right, so whatever. <clears throat> Terror tactics are not working for the Democrats. Absolutely not. I'm trending, huh? That's cool. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, we were actually trending number one worldwide um, just a few weeks ago when it, when the whole, you know, the head thing with uh, with Kathy Griffin, we were trending number one. So thank you very much, everyone who has. I, I, I see you guys on, on Twitter, you know, like liking the stream and, you know, telling people about it. Thank you very much. If you like the Twitter, if you, I mean, if you like the, the stream and all that stuff and you're sharing it on Twitter, thank you so much. It helps us immensely. You wouldn't even believe but let's move on let's let's go on and see what's going on let's see uh hollywood savant said on twitter quote hollywood trying to rig a georgia election georgia election we ain't having that resist liberalism there we go here as you guys can see that it says someone else by the name of curtis uh, said piping money all the way from California to Georgia by truckloads and the sorry libs can't buy an election at any price. <laughs> it all backfired, folks. It all backfired. All right. They can throw money at it. They can start throwing money and money and money, throw everything at it, and it's not going to work. It says, too damn, funny to, uh, too damn funny to see Democrats already spinning the election outcome in Georgia. Money won't get you any, everything you want. And, but basically what that person is talking about is that, you know, they're saying that the Russians somehow got their, their fingers in, in Georgia. And then, pause. Now, that sounded a little bit too bad. Let me say that again. That Russia mingled or meddled in the georgia election there we go the last one was a little bit too uh too gray all right it says georgia 6th district congressional special election oza versus karen not looking good for the democrats and it's not going to look in 2018 that well either it says um <laughs> it says the fat lady is humming in georgia election she could sing before long that's what someone uh, by the name of W S E R Minol ninety nine said on Twitter. So yeah, she she is definitely. It says I'm calling Karen Handel the winner of Georgia sixth congressional district race special elections. Con congratulations to Karen Handel. And um, that's a lot of people are calling it already, and they have to call it. Come on now, look at this fifty two point two or fifty two point five to 47.5 it needs to be called soon come on now what's going on <laughs> kleenex stock is hitting an all-time high because of the liberal tears liberal tears are coming folks it's coming you're gonna see it it's coming as soon as she starts speaking we will go there live so we're gonna continue our coverage until it actually is called for Karen and then after that we will go to her uh, watch party live so she can uh, do her speech all right so don't miss it we're gonna continue here at Golden State Times as long as we need to and uh, we'll go from there Dagger Swords says, GIT Politics, going to audition for America's Got Talent. Hope I don't get booed off stage when I drop the T-bomb. Damn, that's good. Um, Ray said, at GST Politics, I don't agree with all your immigration stances, but it's all good. You're totally right when we have to figure this out. No, we do. We do. We most definitely do. You know... 
I uh, my political stances when it comes to immigration comes because I live in California. I live in Southern California, and as you know, Southern California is prom- in some areas is very Latino, and not only that, it's also very illegal immigrant Latino. Okay, and I see the effects that it has on those areas. So I talk from experience because I seen some cities go from being okay to getting a huge influx of illegal immigrant Latino. Okay, and that city going down. All right, the the pricing of houses going down, the value of homes going down, it's all crazy. Okay, a lot of companies. Are very eager to get a person or a bunch of people for minimum wage or below minimum wage if they get paid under the table, and it ultimately destroys the economy of that city. But thank you very much, uh, Michael Brandt, for those ten dollars. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. It says Trump train getting off the tracks or get crushed. Make America great again. You know the the Trump train is going full steam ahead. And it, you know it's 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 starting to be good. It's starting to be really good. <clears throat> so yeah, you know. So I just base my my uh, my immigration stance on you know what I have seen uh, growing up in the city that I grew up. It, you know there was not that many Latinos. Um, you know I think the the amount of Latinos was like less than ten percent. But um, just in the city right right next to mine. Um, it was promoted, you know. It was really, really Latino. I think it was at over fifty percent Latino, and uh, you will see the difference, folks. You will see the difference. And it's, it, I'm not talking about legal Latinos, though. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about legal Latinos. I'm talking about illegal Latinos. Okay, legal Latinos know that it's it's bad to give rights to illegal Latinos. That's why today we have Latinos for Trump. Or Latinos with Trump, or Latino, whatever. They are legal Latinos that understand that the ones that are illegal need to go back in line, and they need to do it the right way. What I tell people, especially when I went to the Trump rallies, is that、um, this guy came up to me and he goes, "My mom is an illegal alien. My dad is an illegal alien. Why do you want this?" Uh, this president that is going to deport them, and I told him straight out to his face, "Why would you want your family to be in a country where she is or he is in total,、uh, you know, being afraid all the time?" Right? I, I told her, "Is your is your mom and dad allowed to go to San Diego passing the 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 checkpoint?" And he goes, "No." Is your parents allowed to go to, you know, back to Mexico and then come back? No. Like, then, then what's the whole point? What's the whole point of your parents being here if they're afraid all the time that they're going to get arrested or they're going to get deported or they can't do this or they can't do that? They can't go back to Mexico and come back in the airplane and do all that stuff. What's the whole point? You know. So I'm not talking about legal Latinos. I love my legal Latinos. I'm just talking about those that want. To get a free pass and not go through the laws and stuff, you know, like always. It says,、uh, "Handel is kicking the Democrat ass." Yeah, absolutely. By the way, Trump goes nuclear this year. About next, yep. There, more stuff is coming up, and the wall,、uh, the blueprints for the wall is coming, folks. It's coming. All right. So it says that、uh, Karen Handel is leading by fifty-two point five. Uh, John Ossoff, forty-seven point five. So it hasn't changed much. Okay, hasn't changed much, but it's getting there. So we're going to continue with this. <clears throat> Just remember that. What was on it says. Illegal immigration drives wages down. They deserve to come to the U.S. legally and work higher wages. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. Mexicans born in the U.S. don't like border jumpers. Yeah, I know. That's what that's what I was trying to say. If it came out bad, I'm sorry, folks. But you know, it, it, yeah, it, it, that's just basically you know what I've seen and.、Um, 
you know, the, the type of experiences that I've seen here in California. So that's basically what I'm talking about. All right. So it says CNN's David Shalane tried tries to spin Handel's upset victory over Ossoff uh, as nothing great for Trump, but somehow good news for House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. A very odd analysis from a very fake news. That's funny. All right. So, yeah. So, I guess uh, 57. What was that? Five minutes ago. No, over five minutes ago. Decision Desk HQ has projected the winner. Republican Karen Handel. Okay. So, we are calling it. And it has come to the decision that Karen Handel is the projected winner so give me one second i'll put it up on the screen for you guys and uh when she speaks we are going to go there live so don't don't miss it we're gonna stay here and uh and bring it to you guys here live so give me just one second and i'll put it up on the screen uh put it up on the screen here <clears throat> Come on now. All right, hold on one second. Hold on one second. So yeah, it looks like it's been called and Karen has won. I'm going to put it up on the screen, but I'm just trying to figure and she's going to she's set to speak soon. So don't go anywhere. She is said to speak soon on her victory. All right, so it's going to be on your screen. Boom, there we go. So she is the projected winner. So let's see if there's any inf info. Give me one second. Let's see here real quick. <laughs> it went out of line. That's funny. As soon as they... <laughs> All right. So we, we have footage of the, of the, um, the watch party at Karen Handel's, uh, uh, you know, at her headquarters. So just give me one second. I'll put it up on the screen so we can watch it. Thank you very much, everyone. Just give me one second. I'll put it up on the screen right now. All right, so it looks like it went offline for a second, so I'll put it back on the screen in just a few seconds. Give me one second. All so both of them went off screen, so it will be coming up in just a few seconds. When it goes back online, 
for uh, the special election. Uh, GOP candidate Karen Handel's watch party. We will go there live. Um, it looks like it, you know, for now they went on a, I think they're fixing something. The pool feed is fixing something. So we're definitely going to go there in just a few seconds, just, you know, just to, to listen to what she has to say and uh, do her victory speech. Again, uh, K- Republican Karen Handel is the projected winner of Georgia's 6th Congressional District Special. So she's going to be speaking soon, and uh, we'll go there live. Dan, I was looking at the at the stream right now. What's up with all the dislikes? <laughs> Jesus. All right, it's all good, you know. Um, if you guys uh, if you guys haven't yet, please hit that like button, show some support. Uh, we thank you very much for joining us again. Karen Handel is set to speak in just a few minutes. Her victory speech is coming up, and we're gonna have it here live at Golden State Times. Let's see if there's any more updates when it comes to the what people are saying here. So it says that House Speaker Paul Ryan is considering Handel the victor and has released a statement. So this is a statement from House Speaker Paul Ryan. All right. And it says, congratulations to Karen Handel on the hard earned and well-deserved victory. Democrats from coast to coast threw everything they had at this race and Karen would not be defeated. The people of Georgia's 6th Congressional District are the big winners tonight because they have elected a representative who is going to tirelessly fight for them and their interest. Karen is all business. I've campaigned with her and I knew how eager she is to work. I'm excited to have her as a partner in the House of Representatives and I look forward to working with her as we tackle our country's most pressing problems. So House Speaker Paul Ryan is calling it. He's saying that he that she is the winner and that he congratulates her again we are going to be streaming her watch party uh, once it comes up and uh, she's going she's set to speak soon regarding her victory so her victory speech let's see what else it says on here Handel appeared at campaign headquarters not to declare victory but just to say that she was uh, that she has to dot all of her I's and cross all of her T's before she declares victory, but she is expected to be the next U.S. representative from Georgia's 6th 6th District. So, yeah, um, again, she is set to speak soon. Once it actually comes down that she, instead of being in the projected winner, she is actually the winner. She wants to, like she said, dot all her I's and cross all of her T's, and as soon as that happens... She is set to speak, and we're going to stream it here live for you guys at Golden State Times. So let's let's see what the people are saying on the Twitters. <laughs> Someone by Gran Martez saying the Russians did it again. Democrats get crashed in Georgia election despite seven times spending average so again they're blaming it on the russians go figure it says the georgia special election uh either more than half of the people in georgia are complete morons or the election has been hacked i lean towards the hacking part another leftist crying please more liberal tears we need more lube we need more lubricant for the for the trump train it needs to go full steam ahead. South Carolina's 5th District ele- special election, a lot closer than expected. Georgia's 6th election, a uh, lot less close than polls indicated. But this person is way, way, you know, you're way, way late, bro. Jesus Christ. South Carolina, a Republican won already. He's already set the winner. And now Georgia, a Republican won. So that's what's going on. And we're just waiting for... Uh, for Karen Handel's uh, to come out, and uh, we're gonna go to her watch party, so stay tuned. 
She's set to speak soon, so we're, we're going to go there live. So both, both sides are, you know, they're, they're going at it. President Donald Trump's tweet support for Republican candidate in Georgia special election. We, we covered that earlier today. He basically said that, um, you know, she's hardworking. She's going to, you know, make sure that your taxes get lower and she's going to go full steam ahead. It says, if California sent money to Georgia, didn't they interfere, interfere with the state election? Isn't that collusion? We need to investigate immediately. So, you know, they're talking about um, Pelosi. She funneled a bunch of money to Georgia, tried to get us off to win, and he lost. Winning AP calls Georgia election to GOP handle. Hollywood defeated again. <laughs> That's funny. So it says Georgia special election Republican Karen Handel projected to win closely watch house race. So that's uh, coming from Fox News. And uh, you can see <laughs> you can see as CNN be like, ah, oh, crap. I wish I can show you this picture It's hilarious. You can see CNN's face just like, oh, crap. All right. Hold on. Let me see if I can. If I can bring it up for you guys, so you guys can see the the leftist idiots from CNN and their faces of defeat. All right, hold on. CNN defeated. Let's see if I can bring it up for you guys. So you guys can see the face of defeat in real time. Oh here, okay. Here we go. So here's the here's the face of defeat, folks. Look at that. Look at that face. <laughs> oh boy, it's it's just you know just looking at this makes my night. Not only did she win bigly, but look at those faces. The true face of defeat, knowing that within the year there's going to be no such thing as a Democratic Party again. Just boom. Look at that face of defeat. Doesn't that make your night, folks? I think it makes my night. <laughs> it makes my night twice over on this, to be honest with you. But it's just the face of total defeat. All right. So let, let's move on. Uh, I'm going to take this off because it's not going to scare me. It's going to haunt me in my dreams. Even though it's still a good image. All right. So let's see here. All right, let's see what else it says on here. It says, it's obvious to me that 17 different intelligence agencies that Russia hacked the Georgia election to help Trump. Oh, I don't know if they're being like sarcastic or not, but whatever. So someone by the name of Benson Stein on Twitter said the Russians went down to Georgia they were looking for an election to steal. <laughs> That's funny. Let's see if this... Uh... Oh, okay. All right. So, do we have... I don't care about Olsoff. the hell? All right. So, we're going to go to Karen uh, Handel's watch party and her speech soon. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned, folks. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So right now, you know, all of the other networks are starting to call it, you know, like Fox News, MSNBC, NBC, all those people. They're all calling it for uh, Karen, Karen Handel as the winner of the special election. And um, like I said, we're going to be bringing you guys the coverage from her watch party in just a few minutes. As soon as we get the feed, we'll go there live. So a leftist idiot um, on Twitter said, I guess no one should be surprised that a religious bigot wins election in Georgia. Oh boy. Liberal tears. Come on, bring them out. We need lube for the Trump train.
So, <laughs> someone wrote, someone by the name of Joe, NYC eGamer, I guess. Dems are devastated. Republican Karen Handel defeats Democrat John Ossoff in Georgia's special election, according to ABC News. The Russians do it again, according to, <laughs> according to a leftist. They keep on blaming the Russian. That's funny. So results are in, according to the young conservatives. Breaking: Karen Handel declares winner in Georgia. That's good, folks. All right, let's see. Not yet. We don't have any footage yet, but we will have it soon. All right, give me one second and I'll, and I'll see what's going on with that and uh, we'll go there live. But let me just see what. OK, all right. So we got footage now and we're going to go there live. So stay tuned. You'll, you'll see your screen going dark and then um, and then it'll, it'll be coming up on your screen in just one minute. All right. So give me one second.
All right, so here's Ossoff. Let's see what he has to say. That idiot. In this country, to make a statement about values that can still unite people. At a time when politics has been dominated by fear and hatred and scapegoating and division, this community stood up. Women in this community stood up. You did. You did. And you picked this campaign up, and you picked me up, and you picked Alicia up, and you carried us on your shoulders. And we showed the world that in places where no one thought it was even possible to fight, we could fight. We showed them what courage and kindness and humility are capable of. We showed them that we can still build coalitions of people who may not see So this is not the outcome any of us were hoping for. But this is the beginning of something much bigger than us. So thank you. Thank you for the most extraordinary experience I've ever had the honor of being a part of. Thank you for knocking on hundreds of thousands of doors. Thank you for making hundreds of thousands of phone calls. It's extraordinary what you have done here. The fight goes on. Hope is still alive. I thank you all so much. I thank you. I thank my family. And most of all, I want to thank Alicia. Who who's been on the campaign trail for months after working long hours every day in the operating room, who has lifted me up every evening after long days and shown what true partnership is. So thank you, Alicia. Thank you, everybody. All right, folks, so that was the loser. Osof, he was uh, talking, his leftist talking points and all that stuff. So let's go back to, um, let's go back to Karen Handel's watch party. She is set to speak in just a few minutes. So here we go.
All right, folks, just give me one second. The screen is going to go black for just one second, and I'll bring it right back. I'm trying to fix some issues with it, so just give me one second. It is, uh, it is my distinct honor and privilege to present to you Georgia's first female congresswoman. Karen Hand, Georgia 6, Karen Hand, congressional elect of Georgia. First of all, by saying thank you. There are literally hundreds of people to thank and scores of elected officials and GOP leaders who put their confidence in me right from the very beginning, and I'll probably miss a few, but there were several who stepped up um, right from day one, including my very good friend, Bob Ott, Joanne Burrell, Terry Nall, Joe Gebbia and Bates Madison, Joe Lockwood, my hometown mayor, Jerry Wood. And I need to thank you know, on April 18th, I said to everyone that this was going to be a very, very tight race. It was going to be contentious, and it was going to require all hands on deck. And that's exactly what we had. From from all of the others who were the GOP competitors in the your help every single member of the Republican Georgia congressional delegation our constitutional officers the legislators Governor Nathan Deal and First Lady Sandra Deal, Senator Perdue, Senator Isaacson, and my very close friend, Senator Saxby Chambliss. I need to also thank Speaker Ryan and the House leadership and so many of the members across this country who also united to help us hold the sixth. And a special thanks to the President of the United States of America. President Mike Pence and I think it's appropriate to take a minute to acknowledge a new friend that I was able to make over the course of that campaign this campaign and that was majority whip Steve Scalise Right up until that tragic day on the ball field, Steve would drop me a text message every single week just to make sure I was doing okay and hanging tough. I think he even called me the Terminator in one of them. <laughs> Wasn't sure about that one, Steve, but hasta la vista. Let me just tell you. But really and truly, what happened on that ball field was a terrible tragedy. And we need to all continue to lift up 
Steve and the others who were injured that day. And we need to also lift up this nation so that we can find a more civil way to deal with our disagreements. Because in these United States of America, no one, no one should ever feel their life threatened over their political beliefs and positions. And I say that, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to both sides of the political aisle. Through this campaign, I have had a really great joy of getting to know any number of our leaders in Washington. And let me tell you, even though within our own GOP family we sometimes have disagreements, these are fine men and women who are doing their level best for this country. I really am honored to be able to stand before you tonight and so extraordinarily humbled. But as everyone knows, most big things are not accomplished by one person alone. And I had a tremendous amount of support in this campaign from each and every one of you to a great campaign team. They really are, yes, give them a hand. <laughs> to individuals on the ground who put in countless hours knocking on doors and making phone calls in the some of the hottest days ever, y'all. <laughs> but through it all, everyone persevered. And then there's this guy. Thank you. How about Steve Handel? This man is my heart. He tells you he's my number one supporter, and I can tell you that in everything I have ever attempted to do in my life, he has been my number one supporter. And there are no words to say how much I love you. ago, I had the opportunity to speak with John Ossoff. He was more than gracious, and he thanked me for a spirited campaign. And I wish him and Alicia all the best in the new life that they are going to be starting. Now tonight, tonight, tonight I stand before you extraordinarily humbled and honored at the tremendous privilege and high responsibility that you and the people across the 6th District have given to me to represent you in the United States House of Representatives. I will do... We have had a legacy of tremendous leadership in the 6th District. Our very own Tom Price, who's now Secretary of the HHS. Now Senator Johnny Isaacson. And former Speaker Newt Gingrich. These men, these statesmen, have created very, very big shoes to fill. 
and I will do my level best to live up to the standards that they have set. To the John Ossoff supporters, know that my commitments, they exceed every one of you as well. We may have some different beliefs, but we are part of one community, the community of the 6th District. And I will work just as hard to earn your confidence in the weeks and months ahead. And I give every Georgian this promise. My promise is to work every single day relentlessly to make our state and this country a better place. Yes. My pledge is to be part of the solution to focus on governing, to put my experience to work in helping to solve the very serious issues that we're facing in this country. I think I might be the only, if not one of the few, former chamber CEOs to actually serve in the U.S. Congress. And I know I'm one of the few who have come out of local office as a former county commission chairman and I'm also one of the few former secretaries of state. We have a lot of work to do, a lot of problems that we need to solve. We need to finish the drill on health care. We've got to do a better job for this economy so that we can create more jobs and better paying jobs. And we've got to do more for creating jobs, especially in the small business community. We have to make sure that we move forward with comprehensive tax reform. With lower corporate rates, but ladies and gentlemen, also lower individual rates so that our middle class can participate and our small businesses can participate. And finally, permanently repeal the death tax. And to our veterans in the room. To our veterans in the room, we have a high obligation as a nation, and I know I have a high obligation as the next congressman to ensure that we provide our mil military men and women with the resources they need to do the job we are asking them to do. And that obligation extends when their tour of duty is over to them and to their family so that we meet our commitments to them. I have said this before multiple times on the campaign trail, and I'm especially reminded of it tonight. My path has been a somewhat unusual one and I am a pretty unlikely soon-to-be junior congressman from the state of Georgia. I never expected any of this. Growing up in a turbulent home, as I left home at 17 and went to work, I could have given up and let the circumstances that I was facing dictate and control the course of my life, but I did not. I believe that our life experiences the good and the bad, the unique, the mundane, and the difficult. They are what build our character, set our core, help us develop discernment in our decision making. And it's that fighting spirit, that perseverance and tenacity that I will take to Washington. It's been the driving force in my life, and it will be the driving force for you as I represent you. So 
Though very many people have lifted me up in the tough days of my life. But when all is said and done, I know that it has been a great God and a truly great nation that afforded a young girl the opportunity to grow up and be whatever it was she wanted to be. I am also very well aware of another obligation that comes with tonight's decision by the voters. The obligation of being the first Republican woman elected to Congress from the great state of Georgia. campaign, I met a young girl named Sophia. She was at one of our very first rallies right after the April 18th primary. Sophia is a beautiful eight-year-old girl, and she had been following the race and told a mutual friend how much she thought that I should win. So I talked to her a little bit, and here's what she said to me. This is an exact quote. Karen, if you can win, it says to every eight-year-old girl that she can do it too. <laughs> While my name was the one on the ballot, I genuinely believe that tonight is not really about me. It's about all of those young and not so young little girls and boys out there, the ones who have been underestimated most of their lives, told that they couldn't do it or that they weren't good enough, the ones that were always counted down and out. Tonight reminds us, it reminds me, that anything is possible with hard work, determination, grit, and people who believe in you. Thank you for believing in me. Tonight's victory, it's for you, and it's for every single citizen in the 6th District. It's for every single person with a dream. Someone gave me a bracelet a few years back, and it said something that I remind myself of every single day. She believed she could, so she did. Well, friends, we did. So tonight, let's celebrate, and tomorrow, the real work will begin. The hard work of governing and doing that in a civil, responsible way that is in the best interest of every Georgian, every 6th District citizen, and every citizen of the United States of America as we prepare to send Georgia's first Republican woman to Congress. All right, folks, thank you very much for joining us and choosing us as your stream of choice. Thank you very much for choosing us, guys, and uh, thank, you, uh, thank you very much for making us number one. Uh, President Trump is having a rally tomorrow. I've been putting it up on the chat, but I'm going to continue putting it on there. That's the link. Go over there, give it a thumbs up, share it, uh, you know, set the notification once you click on the on the link, it'll, get, it'll take you to where the stream is going to be with your time zone and everything on there. So I hope that you guys join us tomorrow for President Trump's uh, 
rally in Iowa. And uh, thank you very much again for choosing us. If you are new to the community, subscribe to the channel. We stream everything that has to do with politics, everything that has to do with breaking news. We upload news every single day. We also stream the Sean Spicer pressers. And uh, like tomorrow, the Donald Trump uh, rallies. So we do all that stuff. Thank you very much for choosing us. And I hope to see you guys here next time. Again, my name is Gent. I'm from Golden State Times. And I'll see you tomorrow. Peace. Have a good night, everyone. And thank you very much to Truck and also to um, to Carolyn. I think it was Carolyn, the one that was here, right? The other mod. Let me see. Who was the other mod that was? Yeah, Carolyn Hall. Thank you very much for trying to keep the chat clean and enjoyable for everyone. See you guys tomorrow, folks. Thank you.